Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope everybody's doing good today. So I just got back from Nashville last night. Um, I had a wonderful time. But while I was down there in Nashville, I got word about Julio Fulio, a young rapper from Jacksonville, being killed. And if you guys have been on this channel for any length of time, you guys know I've talked about Jacksonville and the rap scene down there and like these rappers who have beef with each other. Julio Fulio, Young and Ace, Bottom Got Em, Queso. So we've talked about them, you know, just periodically, briefly on this channel. But I want to go ahead and shout out Sky Dommel. They left a comment on my page on the post that Maria posted about Julio Fulio, and they said the following. I know you're a busy woman, but I'm hoping you do a breakdown on Fulio because this is sad. Like the saying goes, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite, unfortunately. So I am back home, and I do want to break this down because I know some of you guys love my breakdowns, and some of you guys don't really want to listen to breakdowns of people who help to perpetuate the nonsense further. So what is going on? Let, let me take y'all back to where all of this started, okay? So both of these rappers come from Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville is known for its vibrant culture and rich history, but it also has one of the most turbulent rap scenes down there since the whole drill music era in Chicago. So basically, rapper Young and Ace, he represents a gang and his gang is called ATK, which stands for Ace's Top Killers. And Julio Fulio, he represents KTA, Okay, these acronyms are just mixed around, and that stands for kill them all. Okay, notice how destructive both of these gang names are. So those are their gang names, and both of these rappers, they basically have been dominating the Jacksonville rap scene for a while. So how everything kind of popped off is that Fulio's 16-year-old little brother, Bibi, um, was shot and killed, and it was allegedly done by Young and Ace's gang. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Inside a Northwest Side apartment complex, it leaves this 16-year-old dead. Neighbors say that the shooting sounded like a war zone. They're like, yeah, he had on a uniform, a gray, a gray sweater, burgundy shirt. I'm like, oh my god! Like, I just hang up the phone. One of my own um, god brothers walking the house. He like, bro. They say baby dead, bro. I'm like, fuck, like that shit just like that was like one of the worst losses, like, cause it's like I just had told him like, do not like it's hot outside, bro. It's po like it's just hot, like you don't need to be walking regardless, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like it's hot outside, like, bro. Like he didn't listen, like he was like arrogant, like he was like Man, fuck that, you know. So yeah, yeah, I got killed. That shit like, that shit, that shit like broke me, like you know. Young and Ace's gang, ATK, you know, they were posting taunts on social media, making fun of Julio. Hey, he was sixteen. I think it's so right about the street. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it was, it was a lot of mess that was going on on social media. So what happened was back in 2018, Young and Ace, whose real name is Kenyatta Bullard, he was the lone survivor of a shooting that took place um, on his brother's birthday. So what happened is him, his brother, Trayvon Bullard, and there were two other teenagers. One was Jacoby Grover. They were all under the age of 20, and they were there celebrating Trayvon's birthday. Trayvon also went by the name 23. And so, um, you know, they were shooting videos on social media and apparently they were being followed because they're posting what they're doing on social media, not realizing that somebody was tracking everything that they were doing. So they had just went out to eat. They were celebrating, you know, his brother's birthday. He wanted to go out to eat with all of them. So his brother had just graduated like a week before this and it was his birthday. So they all decided to go out to eat at a restaurant. And so, you know, they were out there having a good time, taking videos, and, you know, unfortunately, they got caught slipping. Somebody rode up on them and literally lit the car up. So all four of them were shot. Young and Ace was shot eight times, but he survived. The other three, including his brother, were all killed. 
So this was a really unfortunate situation and it was viral all over social media. It was on the news. So y'all go ahead and check this out. A shooter or shooters on the run after four teens are gunned down to the south side. What we're learning about the men killed in a drive-by shooting. 18-year-old Trayvon Bullard, 19-year-old Jacoby Groover, and 18-year-old Royale Smith. They lost their lives late last night. Police say the shooter followed the three along with a fourth survivor from a restaurant at the St. John's Town Center to the Town Center Parkway, then opened fire. Sheriff Mike Williams says this shooting is gang-related, not an accident. Not a random act of violence, obviously. Uh, and again, uh, it's, it's about you know, to encouraging young people to do the right thing and make sure you're engaged with the right people and you're hanging around the right people. Uh, and it's a, it's a tragedy, you know, but one that could have been avoided. Our news crews continue to follow this developing story. News for Jack's Eric Avigny joining us near Town Center Parkway where shots rang out just 24 hours ago. Eric, a completely different scene there tonight. Yes, you are very correct. As you can see behind me here, the Town Center Parkway is pretty much back to normal, which is a stark difference compared to last night around this time when this entire area was one major crime scene. Now, since then, we have learned a lot about those four victims. A family friend of Kenyatta and Trevon Bullard tells News for Jax that the two brothers were out with Royale Smith and Jacoby Grover Tuesday night celebrating Smith's birthday when the celebration turned to tragedy. Police say the men were all riding together in this car on Town Center Parkway when people in another car that pulled up beside them started shooting at them. Kenyatta Bullard, who goes by the nickname Ace, was the only person in the car who survived the attack. A family friend says Kenyatta Bullard is an aspiring rap artist. His younger brother, Trevon, goes by the name Quan. He had just graduated from Richview High School last week. Kashan Price graduated with him. He says he learned about Trevon's death through social media. I went on my Instagram, was all over my feed. It was crazy. Jacoby Groover was a standout football player at University Christian High School. He graduated last year. His former high school coach only had good things to say about him. He was a good kid. Um, didn't, didn't really have any issues with him. He was always smiling. Um, all his teammates loved him. Now, as we have said earlier on, police do believe that this was not a random act. In fact, detectives have gone on to say that they believe this shooting was the result of an ongoing dispute between two groups. Reporting live, Eric Avigny, Channel 4. So then after that happened, um, you know, Young and Ace went through a lot, you know, rehabilitative therapy and hospital stays and all that stuff. I'm on my phone and shit, I'm trying to find out where the fuck my girlfriend at, because she was eating too. So I'm trying to find out where the fuck she at. I'm about to go with her, because 23 and Corcoran, they trying to go, they trying to go with some hoes at, you feel what I'm saying? So I'm on some shit, I'm like, all right, let's see, no, we just we stopped at a red light. But you heard was, that, 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 and when that bitch hit my hand, I dropped my phone. I heard 23, he was on the side of me. I hollered him, he's screaming and shit, so I'ma die for you. You gonna die for me, life on the line. I jump over the shield, I'm like, little brother, I got you. Just open the door, open the door. When, he, when, he, when shit serious, he, he called by my real name. He like, Kente, I can't move. Kente, I can't move. Kente, I can't move. Like, just hearing that, I can't move. That shit just fucked my mind up. Like, that shit played through my shit all day. Can't say I can't move. Can't say I can't move. You feel what I'm saying? Ace called ambulance. By the time I look back around, there's already people surrounded. So I said, what will shit happen? Call my girlfriend and shit. After that, we go to the ambulance come with one car. Keep in mind, I ain't even look at my little brother. To, still to the day, I ain't see, I ain't look at my little brother. He laying down on full lap. They came, they grabbed 23 first. They left. And Lennon came, they came and got me. Me and 23 was outside the car. I'm laying down. Wow. Me and 23 on the ground and shit. This is before they came and got him. I'm laying down, but I'm calling out for him. I'm reaching for him. I'm like, 23. But he, ain't, he not answering back to me. I'm like, 23. I'm reaching out to him, though. RJ, Royale, I'm calling about everything. You feel me? He ain't never answer. So I just close my eyes and say, I'm finna faint. I say, I'm about to die. And I'm like, it killed my brother. 
And this before I even knew anyone was dead. I said they killed my brother. I just had a feeling. So we get to the ambulance. All that shit. Cobra was on the next door to me. They brought him back to life four times. He forever four. Everything happened when be four times. They brought him back to life four times. I was in the hospital bed. They told me the doctor told me I was finna die. I told him, I told him to keep 100. You think I'm gonna live? He said, I don't know, it might be. A, I said, keep 100. Do you think I'm gonna live? He said, it's too many holes. Like, I don't think, you, I don't think you're gonna make it feel what I'm saying. So while that's going on, the KTA gang, which, you know, which Julio was a part of, you know, they're on social media clowning and, you know, making fun of the situation and everything else, just like ATK did when Fulio's little brother was killed in 2017. Okay, so you guys just watched that clip. So like I said, you know, Julio was clowning um, this young man's death. He posted a picture of the little boy and said, rest in piss. I'm getting my new shirt made today. I pissed on this one and burnt it already. Um, then he also wrote they should have had a golden scar and a med kit. So it got very, very disrespectful. So while Julio Fulio was clowning online, you know, making fun of the three young men that were killed and the fact that young and Asen was shot, young and Ace went and got a tattoo memorializing, you know, his dead brother and his two best friends. So this whole situation was just really unfortunate. So all of this was brewing on social media, unbeknownst to me. And so how they first came into my consciousness was basically all of a sudden this song goes viral, okay? And so we fast forward to 2021 and Young and Ace ends up dropping a song uh, called Who I Smoke. And basically he was rapping to Vanessa Carlton's 2000 hit, A Thousand Miles. And it was just the craziest stuff I've ever seen. I remember it going viral. I still remember the comments. People were shocked they had the song on replay because they just couldn't believe that they made a drill song to a Vanessa Carlton hit, okay? Um, and when they come off, they just go hard. You know, when I see you, I'm going to push your shit back, boy. Chop us to get the splitting through the set. We don't fight, boy. 12 paramedics couldn't save your fucking life, boy. I mean, it was a mess. And so what I didn't realize at the time is all those names that he's saying, like, you know, Bibby and all that stuff, these were real young men who were killed. And so it was just insane to see this. And I'm like, who, like, who co-signed this? Who, you know, what record label is supporting this? This is insane. Like, they're literally just bragging about killing their ops. And they're doing it off of a classic song. So I had never really seen anything like this. I was just shook it, okay? So what's even crazier is that basically when this ended up dropping, so when this ended up dropping in 2021, literally a week and a half later, Fulio dropped his own hit. So he came back and he ended up making a remix to Fantasia's When I See You. And that is one of my favorite songs, hands down. So I was not happy with none of this shit because I love both of these classics. And now when I hear them, you know, they're, they're tied to this nonsense here. But what was crazy about Julio's video, it was just so disrespectful. He literally shot it in the graveyard and he's literally, you know, um, he has like a picture printed out of the three young boys that were killed and, you know, he's talking mess and he's making fun of, you know, their death. And then he ends up saying something about 23. Yo, this is no me. What happened? Now we smoking 23. <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw that video. So people were just kind of shocked at like how blatant both of these guys who rep both of these gangs were and how disrespectful. But that wasn't the end of it. You know, they went back and forth even more, more bodies. Um, one of the guys who ran with Young and Asen was a young man named Queso. Him and his daddy were out here pulling hits and shooting people. And then the daddy turned around and flipped on him and snitched on Queso. So Queso's currently locked up for murdering Bibby. It's a whole bunch of foolishness. ...was there as well. But back in Jacksonville, Queso had a well-known reputation for demonic antics. He famously tried to organize a team deathmatch in real life with his own cousins, who repped the rival gang, KTA. What's up, where you at? Come on, I do a team death match. Right now? Yeah, I'll do words us too. Look at my cousin. 
Like, we look alike. My cousin don't want to talk. He trying to act all. <laughs> he trying to act all hard. Oh, gangsters. They got the black hoodies on. One of the cousins on that live was named Lil Nine. A month after that back and forth, Lil Nine was leaving a gas station when his car was ambushed. Shot 12 times from a rifle inside another car, sending him crashing into a rental wheel tire shop, where Lil Nine was pronounced dead at the scene. While folks at the tire store were trying to revive him, Lil Nine's friend who was in the crash with him was frantically walking around filming inside the store. Who the fuck niggas play? Play! Who the fuck niggas play? You fuck niggas play, man. Of course, Queso responded with a video of his own, laughing. Get out! <laughs> Get out! <laughs> then Queso's blood brother, also Lil Nine's cousin, would recreate Lil Nine's death video from the tire shop. Y'all fuck niggas play! Y'all fuck niggas play! Y'all fuck niggas play! 60 days later, Queso dropped a music video, and in it, we see him putting a photo of his own deceased cousin, Lil Nine, in the microwave. A month after dropping this song, Queso was arrested for a whole different murder alongside his father, who was charged with accessory after the fact. Allegedly, they were getting revenge on a rival rapper named KTA Lil Buck, who dissed Queso's older brother that died in a van full of Queso's relatives. When two cars rolled up, blocking them off and put a hundred bullets inside the car. Lil Buck was Fulio's close friend and a high priced target that ATK got the drop on, allegedly rolling up at 11 in the morning while he was applying for a job to assassinate him. Queso posted to his Insta story right after saying, I kill a dude then get my toes done. Receiving a pedicure with the caption, kill a n-word then go get my toes done. This wasn't the first hit done outside a job site. Another rapper, Jump Out, who beefed with Young and Ace and ATK, was killed while waiting in line to apply for a job at an Amazon warehouse. Leading to the infamous line on Who I Smoke, where they say, found out where he was working and clocked him out. The war had escalated to a point where, no matter where they were, no matter who it was, one side was shooting at the other, and the other would shoot back. So now, on top of that, what was even crazier, is that Julio Fulio continue rapping about dead ops. So much so that um, one of his songs ended up being a TikTok trend where he had, you know, mocked an 18 year old boy whose remains were found in the woods. And his name was Corbin. And so you had all these white TikTokers doing this dance called Where's Corbin, not realizing that Corbin was a real person. And his mother, Melissa Jackson, had to come out and speak on this because she had reported her son missing back in 2018 and his remains were found in the woods back in 2019. The entire situation was just really disturbing and morbid. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. On the 7th of May 2019, Fulio's close friend and collaborator, 19-year-old Tiki or T-Shots, is shot in a tan SUV at the 5900 block of Christabel Avenue, just north of the Hilltop Village Apartments. Tiki's passing wasn't announced until nearly a month after the incident. However, if you wanted to know the news early, you would only have to go and have a look at Queso's social media, where he appeared holding an assault rifle and quoting one of Tiki's lyrics. Big lock on me ain't got no safety. Big lock on me ain't got no safety. In the months following Tiki's slaying, countless disses against him made their way into ATK's music, dissing the fallen op and saying they're smoking him. Of course, Tiki was one of those names along with Bibi, who was famously disrespected on Who I Smoke. Thing is though, around this time, the ATK shooters were very active. And it wasn't just their enemies being targeted, it was the families of their enemies too. Also in May 2019, KTA shooters attempt to silence the sister of Zion Brown, with this going down on the two-year anniversary of the Zion assassination. Remember at the start of this story when Zeon Brown's shooter was identified as Trey Shorty by Brown's 16 year old sister who was also hit. Well she had actually made a pretty brave post on Facebook calling out Trey Shorty as the shooter and saying that the police are refusing to help them. And well in a hit apparently ordered from jail by Zion's killer himself in an attempt to silence Zion's sister from speaking out publicly and testifying at trial she was shot 14 times. McFadden says in retaliation to her son's murder two years ago her daughter was shot 14 times times in May. She believes her daughter was targeted. He was murdered by someone from their gang and um, that person was sending messages from the jail threatening that if my daughter goes 
supposed to trial that he would get somebody to kill her. Now, the young lady fortunately survived this assassination attempt, and 80KYBZ, real name Caleb Sheffield, ends up getting arrested for this shooting. But in a shock twist, only 18 days after he's arrested, charges are dropped after he provides an airtight alibi and video footage proving that he was in Orlando at the time of the shooting. 17-year-old Caleb Sheffield is set free 18 days after he was booked into Duval County Jail on four counts of attempted murder. Sources tell News for Jacks a video proof Sheffield was in Orlando at the time of the shooting. If he's not the shooter, then that means the real one is still out there. Now, just when you thought this beef couldn't get more dark, do you remember a young man by the name of Corbin who went missing about a year earlier? Well, in July 2019, Corbin is found under tragic circumstances. According to police, his skeletal remains were found in a wooded area in northwest Jacksonville. Corbin Johnson's family reported him missing July 13th, 2018. The 18-year-old disappeared not long after a job interview. Now, one year later, his case is being investigated as a murder. Corbin Johnson was last seen alive in July of last year. Then last Friday, a man discovered the, the victim's skeletal remains in a wooded area of northwest Jacksonville off Utsi Road. Sky 4 flew over the scene as police investigated. You can see multiple yellow evidence markers and a dog sniffing around the wooded area. Now, the loss of Corbin is why some ATK members rep S4C, or Spaz for Corbin, and Folio would later speak on what happened to Corbin in a pretty disrespectful tone, saying what happened to Corbin is his worst fear. This is my worst fear, bro. If you go on news for Jack, bro, the nigga Corbin real deal got kidnapped. Like, I know he got adopted. Do you know how much sense that make? Because when you grown, you get adopted. You don't get killed now. Like, type shit. I ain't got adopted. Real shit. Like, that's my worst feel. A nigga killed now for me. I swear to God, bro. Like, I swear to God, on the news, it said that man Bones got found. Like, that man Bones got found. Just Bones. I swear to God. They said a nigga was mowing the line and ran over that man Bones. I swear to God, I ain't making this shit up. No cap. You going to lose for Jack right now. Nigga was more in the line to find that man bones, I swear to God, no cap. Why be down for nigga kidnapping me, but I'm finna kick, scream, holler, bite your ass, pinch your ass, finna do whatever, man. Nigga ain't kidnapping me, bro. That nigga Corbin got kidnapped, real boy. Ain't none of my niggas getting kidnapped, bro. Real shit, bro. Now, with that kind of energy floating around, then it's no surprise that there was some heavy disrespect incoming from the other side. And in September 2019, Queso would make the news. But this time, not for a grisly crime, but instead getting inducted into the self-snitching Hall of Fame by attempting to release a music project with this cover. Yes, Queso took to Instagram to announce the pending release of his new project titled Bibby Ow, that came along with a front cover that depicts Queso and ATK YBZ quite literally smoking the dead ops. With these people all being pictured and named as Dirk, Vontae, Zion Brown, Bibby, and Trey D, all close friends of Fulios who have lost their lives. But really, it's Bibby who is the centerpiece, and let's not forget people, Queso is literally sat in jail right now, charged with the murder of Bibby. I gotta say, this is probably the first time in rap history that the front cover of a project has been so disrespectful it has literally made the news. Because this cover caused an enormous uproar in the Jacksonville community, and I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this front cover itself quite literally didn't play a significant role in the investigation against Queso for Bibby's murder. The controversial rap album cover is making its way around social media. The cover shows pictures of men who have been murdered in Jacksonville. Local rapper Queso posted the picture to Instagram. The caption on the post says, y'all DM ATKYBZ and tell him to drop dead and I'm a drop it tonight. This album cover, a local rapper named Queso posted on Instagram Monday, is fresh for parents like Benetta McFadden. Her son, Zion Brown, is on the cover. She says he and some of the other men in the picture were murdered. It hurts my heart, like, to see my son on there as a joke. Brown's mother is outraged. She feels like the local rappers are glorifying these murders by putting the victims' faces on the album cover. It's unclear if the rappers are directly linked to these murders. Now, in response to the uproar in the community over this cover, the Jacksonville Sheriff office begun to look much harder at Queso and the people around him. And eventually this extra attention would lead to some arrests, but not for quite some time. And so the violence in the street
Street would continue, as did the disrespect for the Ops on social media. And even with all the added attention of the authorities and literally being on the news from this album cover, Queso didn't think for a second to switch up and act smarter. No, in October, Queso would use the news clip about his incredibly incriminating front cover as an intro for the music video of his new song, Queso Bitch. Yet another masterclass in self-snitching, Queso rapped countless times that he was smoking Dirk and Bibby, as well as saying Bibby had a closed casket, I'm not surprised, and suggesting that he had shot at YNR Mookie with a Draco. Now, YNR Mookie actually clapped back on the song Gangster Talk, dropping the lyric, pulled up on him at the red light, went to ripping in this shit. A line which had a lot of people suggesting that maybe he had something to do with that shooting that left three of Ace's friends to see. Now to an I-Team investigation. The murder of an 18-year-old Jacksonville man becomes the center of a nationwide TikTok trend. Corbin Johnson disappeared in 2018. His remains were found a year later. A rap song with details about his murder has been trending on TikTok for the past few weeks. News for Jack's I-Team investigator Corley Peel spoke with Johnson's mother about the popularity of her son's case and how it's gaining. Corbin Johnson's mother says she's surprised that his case has gotten so much attention lately. This News for Jack's article we posted in 2019 had 6,600 views today and hundreds of thousands more in the last week. Johnson's mother is hoping the new popularity with his case leads to answers. Corbin got kidnapped, they found his bones, he was right. Where's Corbin? Where's Corbin? It's a trend making its way through TikTok. He was right. Where's Corbin? Several TikTokers going viral as they dance and mind the lyrics to a song with details about Corbin Johnson's murder. I just think it's just ignorant. I really do think it's ignorant. Johnson's mother, Melissa Jackson, reported her son missing in 2018. His remains found in a wooded area in 2019. His death ruled a murder. Over the past few weeks, Jackson received dozens of condolences from strangers on social media. And I didn't understand where it was coming from. She was surprised to learn the hashtag Where's Corbin reached up to 3.9 million views on TikTok. The song used in the TikToks was released last year. It's called Beatbox Remix Bibby Flow by local rapper Julio Fulio. Corbin got kidnapped, they found his bones, he was right. Where's Corbin? Sources say Fulio is linked to a violent rap group named KTA. Other murder victims are mentioned in his songs. Prosper got shot, shot, take got shot, ha. Got dropped. Some people asked Fulio about Johnson during his Instagram live last week. Tell me I say, where is Corbin? I don't know what Corbin at. But yeah, that's all I had to say. Several TikTokers now taking down their videos after learning the meaning behind the song. For the most part, it is disgusting a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, you do have some people that um, think it's funny and, and laughing about it and mocking it, but for the most part, it really is touching a lot of people's hearts. Johnson is not missing. His mother knows exactly where he is. To answer the question, where's Corbin? Corbin is right here. He's in my heart. If you're looking for Corbin, that's where Corbin is. He's right here. I have him with me every day. Jackson still waits for an arrest and is hoping the TikTok trend can bring justice for Johnson. Fulio posted on Instagram last month that he is no longer naming homicide victims in his songs, saying that it's childish. I reached out to him for comment, but he declined. Those with any information about Corbin Johnson's murder are urged to call police or Crime Stoppers. Reporting Corley Peel, Channel 4, The Local Station. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So that Corbin hashtag had over 3.9 million views on TikTok. It was really sad how him and others were literally disrespecting the dead. So now we fast forward to everything that went on this weekend, okay? So even before this weekend, Julio had been shot, I want to say about maybe six, seven months ago, he was shot in his foot. And even before then, they had also attempted to kill him in Houston like a year and a half, almost two years ago. So instead of him saying, damn, I've been shot in my foot. Let me calm down. You know what I'm saying? Let me reevaluate my life. Shit is getting real. I really feel like this young man after a while was just chasing death. So after he was shot in his foot, he put out a lot of different videos. And I mean, you can go back in the comments where people were telling him, go heal, stop drilling. Um, shit, you lucky. You're not always going to be lucky. 
And then in one of the lyrics, he said this. He said, death is getting closer. Satan says I'm one shoot out away. Death getting closer. Satan say I'm one shoot out away. This was back in January that he was saying this. So I feel like he was constantly chasing death and he knew that something was coming. And this whole situation is just really disturbing because he literally was one shoot out away from death. So what happened this past weekend is that basically... He was posting his location. He was supposed to be doing some type of, you know, concert. He told everybody um, he's in a Tampa, Florida Airbnb. He was throwing a pool party and he asked people to like come and, you know, basically DM him for the address. Um, he also had the club address posted as well. Now, this is somebody who was just literally shot in the foot back in January. And there was another attempt on his life a year, year and a half ago. And you're publicly posting and promoting where you're going to be, knowing that you have all these ops out here. He's dissed so many people. And so the top comment, after he posted this flyer, the top comment says, this shit is getting shot up. That was the top comment, even before he died. And he had posted that on June 14th. So people knew where he was going to be. He posted this on June 14th. He said it was going to take place, you know, June 21st. So he was moving, unfortunately, very, very sloppy. He had also taken to his social media page and he had posted the following saying that, you know, he doesn't really drink and to, you know, pull up because unfortunately they had gotten kicked out of the Airbnb because you can only have some people in the Airbnb. So once they found out it was going to be a party, the host was like, y'all got to go. So at that point, he wanted to go to the Holiday Inn. And that's where he was going and he was deep. He had all these people with him, but that still did not stop death from eventually finding him. The pool party start the day at five, six o'clock. If you already got the address, pull up, man. You got the address, pull up. If you need the address, DM me right now. The pool party start at five, six o'clock. DM me for the address or DM Fulio Bookie ESPN. I'm going to put it right here. Got me drinking, cuz. <laughs> I don't need drink, cuz. Hold on. Mm -mm. <laughs> we can't do the fuck for my birthday, man. Everybody coming up the stairs. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? 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 Deep as hell. We deep as hell. 20 deep. Lit. Everywhere we a crime scene taking up this whole parking lot behind me. This is a Holiday Inn right across the street from USF. Here, four people were shot and so were two cars. Police say they are also now a part of the investigation. A birthday celebration that took a turn for the worst. Now cars filled with bullet holes are at the center of an investigation to find out why famous rapper Julio Fulio, who just turned 26, was shot dead early this morning. At this point, it's part of the investigation, but it seems that they might have been coming here to the hotel to get a room. After a social media post from Julio Fulio said he and his friends were kicked out of an Airbnb. They found themselves at this Holiday Inn where hotel guests like Jeremiah Claypool had to be escorted to and from their rooms post gunshots. I only heard one, it woke me up, but I, apparently there were more than that. Police say they got the call at 440 this morning. Julio Fulio, whose real name is Charles Jones, was confirmed dead at the scene while three other shooting victims were taken to the hospital. No one has been arrested in connection to this shooting. You know, we always say it, but in cases like this, it really does make the difference. If you saw something, if you heard something, any little detail can help us figure out what happened here this morning. For now, investigators will lean on federal agencies and work with hotel surveillance video to help determine how the shooting events took place. Also, interviews from witnesses like Claypool. And in this situation, four people were shot. Three people right now, they've survived. They're in critical condition. He was the only one dead. So isn't it very interesting that we go back to 2018? A lot of people feel like he had something to do with the death that happened to Young and Ace's brother. A lot of people feel like Fulio was one of the people, one of the shooters. I don't know, but that's what the streets have said. So in that situation in 2018, four young men were shot. Three died. Young and Ace survived. In this situation, four young men were shot, three lived, Julio Fulio died. 
and it happened on the 23rd of June. The young man who was killed that Fulio was making fun of in the video, his nickname was 23. Now we smoking 23. <laughs> Again, you can't tell me that this is not deeper on an esoterical level. This whole situation, this how everything went down. So they're saying that the police were caught about 4.40 a.m., um, you know, to a report of a shooting. And when they got there, they saw all four victims. So we're going to go ahead and watch these news clips. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. We will not tolerate revenge and retaliation. That's the message from Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters after a Jacksonville rapper was murdered in Tampa. This is new video showing cars full of bullet holes. A rapper and three others were shot while in these cars. I think everyone feels the same way. That this is not something that's okay. This is not something we're gonna tolerate. And uh, we're gonna pay very close attention, so don't get involved. This has been one of the top stories on our website since we first brought it to you yesterday. The murder of rapper Julio Fulio. His real name is Charles Jones. Yeah, Fulio was killed in an ambush-style attack in the parking lot of a Tampa hotel yesterday morning. That was hours after he posted his location online for his 26th birthday party. And now Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters tells us his detectives are paying extremely close attention to clashing groups after Fulio's murder to make sure the violence doesn't spill into the lives of civilians. News for Jackson reporter Tarek Miner spoke with Sheriff T.K. Waters and a retired detective whose life was also affected by street violence. New images tonight from Tampa showing just how many bullets were fired into two cars, including the one that rapper Julio Fulio was riding in. Three others were also shot. It happened just hours after the rapper invited his fans to celebrate his 26th birthday with him at an Airbnb, sharing his location with the public. Less than 48 hours after the murder, Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters had this to say about the potential for retaliation in the River City. We're not going to allow you to, to just arbitrarily run around and spray bullets into people's houses and cars. And um, it's just something that we're going to pay very close attention to. And I want, the, I want the public to be vigilant. In a news conference this morning, Waters says he's never seen so much devaluation of human life, referring to music videos produced by Julio Fulio and others, which reference young men being murdered in Jacksonville. Waters says his detectives aren't only following online leads in this high-profile crime, they also plan on beefing up surveillance of known rivals and surveillance of Fulio's allies. Now, if it takes us following them one at a time, we'll follow them one at a time. Um, maybe surreptitiously, maybe overtly, uh, you don't know, but we're going to keep them off balance. So you can't come in here and start shooting up neighborhoods and cities and cars and doing whatever you want to do. News for Jacks also spoke with retired JSO Detective Kim Garner, who worked with the department for more than 26 years, sharing with us that his son, Kim Varner Jr., was murdered in 2015, and his son's name was mentioned in one of Fulio's raps. Some of the things he said in his music, he, he, he mentioned my son's name. You know, I lost my son to balance. He mentioned my son's name in one of his songs, and he had nothing to do with it. He had not, definitely had nothing to do with it, but he mentioned my name. And I get it. He's trying to make music, get street cred, and, and, and build a reputation. But, I mean, you go about it the wrong way. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. So this entire situation is insane. But in the same way he lived and died... You know, his ops are not making fun of him in death. They're posting all types of crazy things on social media as well. Young and Ace, he took to social media and he posted and deleted this. He says that boy going back the same day he came in. June 23rd, 2024. His little brother was 23. So he posted that and deleted it. So another guy that's been making fun of this whole situation um, who rides with Young and Ace is Tay Shots. So he's been posting all types of stuff on his Instagram page, also clowning the situation as well. Y'all can go ahead and check this out. The Grim Reaper has done. Well, y'all, they caught him. The Grim Reaper has done got reaped. Who's your dad? I don't know who got him. I feel like them people set him the fuck up with hell. Don't ask me. Hey. You deep as hell at four in the morning and you out there drinking. You don't even drink. That, that's just bad all all the way the fuck around. I either sit that man up or them people got him here. Either way, it ain't my problem. I ain't do the shit. That's crazy because he did all that damn this and then got hit the fuck up. That, that, I mean, not only that, he this one of his options, his songs saying that he died on his birthday. And look at you. Dead on your creep
people got hit up and you the only one died. That's definitely cool. Who had a great run on this bitch, but nigga, you wasn't innocent. I'ma just go ahead and tell you now. Everybody that think that nigga in heaven, go ahead and look downward, cause that bitch is not up there. I don't think God let his kind up there. I think y'all need to look towards the ground. In my defense, I feel like he was asking for the shit, cause ever since that little distance shit happened between him and all the mother niggas, he just got the posting everywhere he went. If you ain't see that shit coming then, hell, I don't know what the fuck you thought was gonna happen to that nigga. Well, he gone. Smoking fully, yo. Smoking fully, yo. New York box. Smoking fully, yo. Fully, yo. Fuck fully, yo. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. Now the police in Jacksonville are speaking out about the situation. Um, they were saying, from what I heard today, that there might be surveillance footage um, of the people who did this. And they said they're not putting up with any more retaliations. They're tired of the killings. They're tired of these young people, you know, treating life like a Grand Theft Auto game. You know, this is not a video game. There's no restart. So the police officer that's speaking in this interview, he was saying some real stuff. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip. A question about something else. Yep. Uh, generically speaking, what are your thoughts about the glorification of violence on social media, gangs, the, the detriment to the community? Uh, the danger that it poses. I mean, unfortunately, I, I think um, young people think this is a game, and uh, you know there'll be comments about this in the comment in the statement that I make, and they'll they 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 make it like it's a like it's a video game. It's not. This is real life. So he has a mother. You know, he has parents. He siblings, probably friends, and um, they have to deal with these kind of losses, and it's unfortunate. Now the the next thing is these groups. And I won't name them. They know who they are. We're not going to tolerate any any retribution, any revenge. We're going to watch. We're going to be around, paying attention to what's going on. But it's unfortunate. It should never happen to our kids. Uh, and I, I've I've never seen so much devaluing of human life. You know, it's like it's like it's fun, and they talk about it in uh, in, in rap videos and songs, and it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. What's your message to anyone who might be a younger person who might be? considering this kind of love on the streets well it's it this is not a game is my message this is not something that we, we're going to tolerate around town i think the media i think the citizens of jacksonville i think everyone feels the same way this is not something that's okay this is not something we're going to tolerate and uh we're going to pay very close attention so don't get involved stay away from the, stay away from the nonsense you've heard some people concerned about the safety here in jacksonville retribution is that a a viable concern what is the police um so i can tell you that i've made a, a several phone calls and discussions with the under sheriff and staff members about paying very close attention to certain groups that i know are are clashing with one another they know who they are um and we are going to pay very close attention to make sure that you know we're not going to allow you to, to just arbitrarily run around and spray bullets into people's houses and cars and um it's just something that we're going to pay very close attention to, and I want the I want the public to be vigilant. Pay attention when you see these things going on. Look, the social media world is called meta for a reason. It's make believe. It's not real life. Real life is what happened to Fulio yesterday, um, and that happens, and it should not happen. So we're going to be paying very very close attention. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. So you guys just saw that news clip. So what I want to say is this, like I said, this entire situation, it really broke my heart because we're dealing with young people. I mean, he's not, we're dealing with young people. And as a mom of a 20 something year old, like this is just heartbreaking to see this and to see all this play out. I'm not shocked that he was killed in the least because of the energy that he put out there, the things that he did. But none of these people are innocent. You know, everybody's talking as if, as if he wasn't taunted after losing his little brother and then later on also losing his cousin. What I see here is a bunch of young men who are not only traumatized, but suffering from what I like to call hood PTSD. 
Okay, you got a lot of young guys who are dealing with killings of their family members, cousins, brothers. There's no counseling. There's no healing. It's nothing but anger. And then they bring this to social media and it's the fans who feel the bullshit. And then once they die, everybody wants to act shocked and, you know, oh my gosh, and RIP, like his followers have jumped up. His streams have jumped up. There's so much money in black death, especially when it's connected to hip hop, it is insane. And people need to really, really wake up. What people don't understand is that not only did his followers jump up, okay, in, in less than 48 hours, the amount of money that's now being generated from his music, who do you think is getting that money? A lot of these rappers are definitely worth more dead than when they're alive. A lot of that money that he's generating now in death that he could barely generate in life. Because again, if he had it like that, he would not have been riding in the same car that he was shot in not even a few months ago. He would have been able to get a rental car, have a driver, move smarter. If he was balling, he would not have to be staying at the Holiday Inn, which is one of the most ghettoest hotels. He would have had a secure venue with security and police and everything else. So it's sad because now in death, he's making money for these executives and these record labels and another mother has to bury her child. It's sad because these labels have insurance policies on these artists and either way for them, they get rich. And then it's the family left mourning and, and trying to pick up the pieces. But... Like I always tell you guys on this channel, y'all know I speak about this a lot and I tell y'all all the time about the power of... So for me, when I reflect back on the careers of both Young and Ace and Julio Fulio, I think it's very crucial to remember um, the immense power that words hold. And as artists, their lyrics not only shape their personal narratives, but they also influence the lives of their listeners as well. The Bible emphasizes in Proverbs 18.21 that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. This scripture highlights that our words can build us up or tear us down. Our words can also bring life or bring destruction. Words can either be poison or they can be fruit. While both of their music talked about pain, loss, and conflict, and, and clearly a lot of PTSD, like I said earlier, their feud played out through diss tracks and social media exchanges. It's now become a defining part of their careers. So the only, the only next step is that one of them would have to die. All of this has been playing out for years now, and this is the final act in that play that's been playing out on social media. And while this rivalry of both of these gangs have bought them, you know, so-called clout and fame, it also serves to remind us that words have consequences and words have power, and that people need to be mindful of the things that they put out there. You know what I'm saying? I think it's sad when I go back and I watch a lot of his interviews he was always talking about death and being ready to die. Even when people interviewed him, it was never about, you know, what, 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 what do you like? What, do you play basketball? Do you, you know, play video? Like, what do you do outside of rapping about your dead ops and killing people? What's your family like? You know what I'm saying? How are you as a father? How are you as a son? Like, it was never anything positive in any of these interviews with these young men. It's just about what happened. How did it feel to be shot? You know, how do you feel about your dead ops? And you, it, it was just insane watching some of these interviews check them out i get back to jacksonville i go get a um, poster printed out of the situation the news clip with his dead homeboys on the shit i get like two bottles of cheap ass champagne or whatever i go to the graveyard i shoot the video and i drop that bit you don't think you're in too far hell no nah. once dead people mentioned it's already too far you know what i'm saying they already mentioned my brother so it's already too far you get what i'm saying so anything that happened afterwards is just extra shit you get what i'm saying it's, you know, is it never a time you think like Man if I do this shit right here It's gonna put a bigger target on my back No Cause it's already It is what it is already So Nothing I can say A dude can make them Wanna kill me more You know what I'm saying Like It's already stamped So It is what it is I think about death every day In what ways? Like I could die today Or uh, I could lose one of my dogs today Or I could lose a family member today Shit can get real today. Are you afraid of it? Mm -mm. Oh, God, Here I go. Ah.
All right, see, I just saw those clips. He says he thinks about death every day, only for him to be shot at the Holiday Inn. Y'all heard them gunshots multiple times, and then that's supposedly him being rolled out on a stretcher. You know, the entire situation is really sad and heartbreaking, you know, and it's like, I don't understand how many more rappers, young people have to die over foolishness. You know, it's to the point now where a lot of these guys who are beefing the hood, these are real beefs. These are real people, real people's family members being shot and killed, real situations. And now it's playing out in the industry. Nobody would ever go to a pop star and ask them questions concerning death and murders. They only do this in hip hop. So you guys have to understand the games that are being played. They don't get these type of questions when they're interviewing country music stars because that's not the energy that they put out. This is what's fueling hip hop, this whole drill culture. And it's really sad. That's why I was calling out rappers like Mano, you know, a few months ago when they were arguing with, you know, Mayor Eric Adams to not, you know, ban drill music in New York. Mayor Adams met with a group of drill rap artists last night. He's criticized the music genre for contributing to the rising violence in the city. But as CBS 2's Andrea Klein Thomas explains, the mayor and the rappers were able to come to an agreement. It's been a lot of talk about drill rap, drill music, New York City, connecting violence with the, with the culture. Late Tuesday evening, drill rappers met with Mayor Eric Adams, who's been critical of their music, saying it's causing a spike in violence. But Brooklyn rapper Bleezy says the meeting was productive. And we got a chance to speak to him as brothers, as we should, and we got a perfect understanding of what's going on. Drill rap came under renewed scrutiny after 18-year-old artist Jaquan McKinley's murder earlier this month, leading Mayor Adams to call for the music's removal from social media. Violent people who are using drill rapping to post who they killed and then antagonize the people who they are going to kill. Is what the problem is. People look at the videos or listen to the lyrics and stuff. It's going to be characterized as, you know, talking about guns, talking about money, talking about. But that's just uh, a leader period at every genre. While Bleezy admits some artists go too far. If you ain't experienced poverty, you shouldn't even have your opinion on anybody moment. Bleezy says he focuses on the hardships in Brownsville, adding addressing the real root of violence goes well beyond any lyrics. The community is like, it's, 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 it's like, there's no hope, there's no opportunities, no, we're just making music so we could get out of these places. The meeting with Mayor Adams ended with a handshake. The mayor said that a new initiative in partnership with the rappers will be rolled out in a few days. Why do we always want to glorify the worst of the worst? You know, it's, it's really, really sad that you have these mega corporations that are eating off of the death and the trauma of young black men in the hood. I can't even be mad at Young and Ace and Julio Fulio. They're a product of their environment. Somebody gave them a stage and a platform. They didn't go viral by happenstance. Somebody helped fund those music videos. Somebody had to okay the fact that they were able to use those beats and remake those songs. It's just really, really disturbing. And unfortunately, this is not going to be the end. This music is so low vibrational. It's insane. And we wonder why when people go to the clubs now, especially hip hop clubs, a lot of people aren't dancing. They're just standing, they're looking at each other, they're mean mugger, they're on their phone. They're not even enjoying themselves or being able to just, you know, have a good time because you literally have to have a, your head on a swivel the whole time you're in the club and these songs are playing. But go to a country music club. Go to a club where it's like, you know, older folks and it's just jazz and R&B. It's not the same energy. You know, even less than like a few hours after it was announced that he was dead, Young and Asen dropped a diss track. He dropped a diss track called Do It. And when you go on his Instagram page, he has a baby. It's like the only person you should be doing it for is for your son. You should be doing the right thing and not out here, you know, rapping and, you know, gloating about your ops being killed. Because it's like, where does it end? And what happens when his people put a target on your back? At this point, unfortunately, it seems to be a never ending cycle. So this entire situation is disturbing. I didn't mean to make this video so long, but 
you know, it was a lot to go through and you said you wanted a full breakdown. So this is it. I hope you, you know, got a wealth of information from this. But one thing I do want to say is regardless of where you stand on this, if you're team, you know, Julio Fulio or Young and Asin, it's still sad that it's another young black man deceased. And I hope somehow this wakes up young people watching this and understanding like that officer said life is not a video game there's no redo this is not grand theft auto you don't get another chance once you're gone you're gone and it sucks to you know lose your life at this young age 26 is not old at all this young man and all these young guys that i've talked about in this video they had their entire lives ahead of them and it was just based off of one bad decision you know, getting involved with the gangs and, you know, hanging with certain people. The whole thing is really disturbing. We have a whole generation of men being lost, being lost. And it looks like a lot of that is just simply due to clout. The same thing that went down in Chicago, you know, during the 2010s has now spread to New York. It's spread down to Jacksonville. So I don't know when it's going to end, but it's it's really sad. So once again, rest in peace to Julio Fulio. Again, a lot of people may not like him, but at the end of the day, he has a family. He has a mother. He has people that cared about him as well. So with that being said, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning the death of Julio Fulio. Um, how do you guys feel about this breakdown? Did you learn something new? Um, so yeah, I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Make sure you guys hit this video with a like because it took a while to put together. Also, feel free to share the video as well and I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Stay safe. Be blessed. And remember, the power of the tongue is very, very real. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.